Today on Ham Radio q and I'm going to take you through the process of building a center connector for a dipole antenna, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. One of the most common and ubiquitous antennas for amateur radio is the simple dipole antenna. And for good reason. Dipole antennas are easy to build and are proven performers. The ARRL antenna book says this about dipole antennas. The dipole is a fundamental form of antenna. In its most common form, it, it, it is approximately one half wavelength long at the frequency of use. The name comes from di, meaning two, and pole, meaning part. That relates to the opposite voltages applied to each half of the antenna so that it has two electrical halves. Well, dipoles can be used on just about any amateur radio band, but they are most common on the HF bands, that is on frequencies 30 MHz and below. Wire dipoles are easy to construct as you only need a few parts, mostly just an appropriate length of wire, some ins insulators for the ends, and a center connector. Most of these parts can be purchased from a variety of amateur radio suppliers, both online or at a storefront. I'm planning to build a linked dipole antenna, but I didn't have a suitable center connector, so the first thing I did was to search online. After seeing prices ranging from $25 to $45, I decided that I could do better myself. So I built this dipole antenna center connector out um, for about $12 out of parts commonly available at your home improvement store. Of course, you're also going to need the SO239 bulkhead connector, and that's, but those are available online or at other places. Now, of course, if you're like me, you, know, you could probably scavenge up most of the parts that were left over from uh, previous projects. And I did have some bulkhead connectors that I picked up from a ham fest uh, years ago, but since ham fests are few and far between right now, you can also purchase them online. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the steps of building your own dipole antenna center connector. Once you have all the parts and tools collected, you should be able to put this together in about 30 minutes. Starting off for parts, you're going to need a 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch by 1 inch PVC T connector, two 3 quarter inch PVC plugs, one 1 inch PVC plug, three 3 16 by 1 and a half inch eye bolts, three number eight washers, three 10 by 24 nylon locking nuts, an SO239 bulkhead connector, rosin core solder, and flux. You're also gonna need a couple of lengths of 14 gauge insulated stranded wire and some PVC adhesive. I'll put a full list uh, to, to all of the parts necessary in the video description below. As for tools, you're gonna need wire cutters and a stripper, power drill, a 5 seconds inch drill bit, a 5 8 inch spade drill bit, vice grips or other locking wrench, needle nose pliers, a small file, and a high power soldering gun or iron. You will need to solder the 14 gauge wires to the bulkhead connectors. A 30 watt pencil tip iron will probably not generate enough heat to do this, so I recommend either a 100 watt soldering gun or a butane iron with a wide tip. Starting out, you're going to need to drill a few holes into the caps and the T-connectors. So into the two 3 quarter inch plugs, drill a 5 30 seconds inch hole into the center. You will then move the nut that came with the eye hook all the way to the end of the threads and then thread the eye hook through that hole. It's going to be a tight fit, so work it in. Uh, do this with both of the 3 quarter inch plugs. With the T-connector, you're also going to need to drill three 5 30 seconds inch holes. One on the top of the connector and two under, under the sides in the elbow portion of the T. I drilled these holes um, in the bot these bottom holes at sort of an angle as this is where the wire from the connector will then come outside. Thread the third eye hook into the top of the T just like you did with the plugs. Moving on to the one inch plug, you will need to drill a 5 8 inch hole into this plug. I used a spade bit to do that. But first, drill a pilot hole so that you know that you're going to be centered in the plug. Safety first. PVC is a soft material, so take it easy in drilling the hole with a spade bit. I used my vice grips to securely hold the plug while drilling. Test the bulkhead connector to make sure it fits. 
And if it doesn't, you, know, you can sand out the hole a bit to make it bigger. Now we move on to the final assembly. On the back side of the eye bolts, place a washer and then a locking nut. Tighten the nut with the needle nose pliers. Next, cut two lengths of 14 gauge wire. Don't worry about making them too long. Uh, you can always trim them later. Make each about, a, uh, about 18 inches or so. Next, tie a knot into the wire at about the four inch mark. This will prevent the wire from being pulled out of the connector at, when it is fully assembled. Next, go up through the uh, one inch hole on the, on the T and then thread the wire through one of the drilled holes and do that with the second wire also. Now you're ready to solder the wires to the connector. First, strip about a quarter inch of insulation off the wires and tin them with the solder. Next, use the small file to rough up the chrome finish on the SO239. Then solder one of the wires to the center connector of the, of the bulkhead connector. Next, uh, to make things a little bit easier, I'll dab a bit of flux on the bulkhead connector and then place a small pad of solder there. Once the solder has adhered to the connector, you can then go ahead and then solder the second wire to that pad. Now that this is complete, let things cool a bit as the connector is going to be hot. Then you can push the bulkhead connector through the hole of the one inch plug and then add the lock washer and jam nut to tighten things down. If this all looks good, use the PVC adhesive to seal things up and to make your handiwork permanent. Now a couple of things to note. First off, the plugs are not going to go in all the way. There will be a slight gap. And this is due to the wires and the knot inside of the T. And the second thing is that there's going to be a slight gap where the wires exit the T. Now you can dab a bit of silicone in there if you want to make them watertight. Third, and most importantly, this is just a center connector. It is not a one-to-one -one ballon. One-to-one -one ballons are good for eliminating common mode current, but aren't necessary feature of a dipole antenna. You can use a dipole antenna without a one-to-one -one ballon, and it's going to work just fine. But if common mode currents are a concern to you, and you can add some ferrite beads to your feed line, or make a choke out of a few loops of coax. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, this center connector will be part of a linked dipole antenna project I'm working on. Uh, you'll see that antenna in a future video. So there you go. Do you have any questions or comments on the dipole antenna center connector project? Well, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them and see what I missed. So please share your advice also. I'll follow up on the conversation and maybe pull a few out for your next, our next Your Questions Answered video. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpole-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so if you like this video, give me the big thumbs up, and also check out some of the other videos right over here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe is the best way to be notified uh, when a future, future video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, kb 9 vbr Have a great day, and 73. Then, um, uh, use the PVC adhesive to seal it up and to make your handiwork permanent. Permanent. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs>